Hi everyone, and welcome! This is the start of a series of videos where I'll be looking back at how games use gameplay as a feature for a narrative or storytelling, whether the game is new or old. I'd like to begin by laying out the story of the game in question, and then going forward with how the game conveys the story to the player. So, as a warning, each of these videos will contain massive spoilers relating to the story and how it's shown to the player. So if you'd like to experience the game for yourself, with each game that I'll be discussing, make sure you do so before watching. This is a topic I personally cherish, and it isn't always the focal point of why a game may be good or bad, but it does affect how much people may value one game over another title. There are certainly a lot of examples of games that may tell the player outright through text how its story may unfold, and there is nothing wrong with that. My goal is not to polarize games for being enjoyable for one reason or another, as video games serve to be a genuinely positive experience for so many individuals, all for drastically different reasons. I find this captivating. I find it impressive when a game can manage to give a player direction or emotional feedback through sensory means, and I believe this is what separates games as a medium and why they could be considered a form of art, and a very effective platform for storytelling. In fact, I'd love to hear about any game you can possibly think of that has done this for you personally, because it tends to have a profound effect on how the player feels about any specific title, as stated before. Let's begin. If gameplay is used to convey the emotions of a character, do something as basic as teach the player how to utilize mechanics in a unique way, tell a story, build a world, or even make the player feel something, emotions or otherwise, Intentionally, that is, aside from anger due to bad or unintentional flaws or even mechanics that weren't meant to be there in the first place. Aside from that, I think it should be worth mentioning any examples of this. Jumping into this topic myself, it is difficult to choose what to discuss first. After a lot of thought and consideration for my own personal tastes, I had to choose Hyper Light Drifter to discuss first. There will be spoilers galore going very in-depth for each title going on, and if you've not experienced Hyper Light Drifter for this video, I would highly recommend you do so first. I can assure you, you will more than likely witness how powerful gameplay can be as a narrative. Now the format for these videos going forward will be told in two parts, maybe split into three, but as far as the two major portions of the video, it'll be one, what is the story, and two, how is it conveyed to the player. It is important to note that the lead developer for the game, Alex Preston, had been born with a congenital heart disease. Throughout his life, he had been hospitalized with digestive and immune system issues relating to his condition. Hyperlight Drifter was created as a means to tell a story he can identify with, expressing something to a larger audience so he feels more connected and have an outlet for the many emotions that crop up around life-altering issues. The playable protagonist in Hyper Light Drifter suffers from a terminal disease. This is a running theme for the main character in the game known only as the Drifter. The Drifter came to the world you play in, presumably looking for a cure for this strange affliction. Putting his faith in Anubis, a character very central to the plot of the game, drawn in by a false cell, the Drifter is thrust into this world where you explore as the player. I feel it is also important to note at this point. Preston received many letters of support from people across the world after reporting on some of his health conditions. These letters influenced Preston to alter the story in Hyper Light Drifter. No longer would the problem be threatening solely the Drifter, but this terminal illness would be a conflict shared by many. This is evident by the beautifully depicted central hub of the game, which you are only transported to after the Drifter is led by the strange Anubis, seen at the beginning of the game eventually succumbing to the disease, or the unknown threat, for the first of many times in the game. The Drifter is then saved by another wanderer who resides in this area. You wake in their house, and can see charts for where you need to go to vanquish this corruption. It is clear that the Drifter who has taken you in is also suffering from this unknown threat, and is also on the warpath to stopping it. As you step out of the Drifter acquaintance's living space, you discover you are in the central area of the world a neutral territory, and a standing ground for many of the people from the northern, southern, western, and eastern territories you explore throughout the rest of the game. 
A unknown threat is haunting the protagonist in this world's many inhabitants. This threat is briefly seen after conquering each of the four main areas of the game. There is a pillar that you have access to after conquering each of the four areas in the game. Conquering these will eventually lead to the Wellspring, where the final conflict arises. In each of the respective territories you explore throughout the game, unknown technologies and artifacts are frequently seen and brandished by the Drifter as well as the foes you encounter within each region. This world was run by large titans briefly shown in cutscenes. Their sheer size is terrifying in scope. Only the titans' corpses remain and are seen very frequently within each territory. The titans' corpses alone span the height of mountains and sometimes serve as the foundation for entire regions you explore. It is assumed that the only way to inhabit this world was to vanquish these terrifying beings and use their own powers against them to become immortal. This is the way the technology you see in the game came to fruition. As seen on many of the obelisks you can find in the game hinting on what may have happened in the past that brought this world into the state it is currently in. This power called for Anubis, and this is why he has sent you here. To free him from the shackles that this world has given him. As you progress through the game you follow the lead of the aforementioned Anubis utilizing these strange technologies to eventually unlock the way to the greater threat of this world, residing within the Wellspring, only known as Judgment. Judgment is the one who is causing this affliction only to protect the perfect cell, knowing full well that if this perfect cell is vanquished, so will he. Each time you die in the game you're resurrected by Anubis, because this is his will. Anubis's power is being utilized to sustain this perfect cell, and he will not stand for it. You must end Judgment's reign and free Anubis from his shackles. Hyperlight Drifter's story is very melancholy. This is especially prevalent within the final cutscene of the game. Judgment has been vanquished, but so too has the corruption over the world you were in. But, in the end, you are abandoned by Anubis. The one who had guided you to each of the four major pillars in the game to purify the corruption of this world, and rid of the perfect cell that limits and displeases him as a deity. Anubis is seen going back to the world which you began your journey. Your final reward as the Drifter is these last few moments free of corruption and a peaceful passing. The Drifter has unknowingly spent his final moments selflessly saving this world of the suffering he and many of the others had to go through. You can see the world as it was without Judgment's torment. Using Judgment as an allegory for a terminal disease, for me personally, this makes the story very impactful and beautiful. These are the main plot points of Hyper Light Drifter. However, there is a lot of lore surrounding the way each respective species gained control of the four main territories within each cardinal direction. And I would implore you to witness how these foreign technologies and the looming threat of judgment has shaped each of these territories and the beautiful world Heart Machine has crafted overall. I can promise you it'll all be told to you in a way only a game that masters the use of storytelling through gameplay can do. Now how is Hyper Light Drifter's story conveyed to the player? Going forward, this portion of the discussion will be split into three different subsections. Sounds, feels, and sights. This gives us a way to compound a more objective way of discussing video games without putting into question anyone's subjective enjoyments from a game because even that is legitimate and I can't take that away from anyone, nor would I want to. Okay, so first delving into the sounds of Hyper Light Drifter and how that conveys a story. I cannot talk about Hyper Light Drifter without at least mentioning the music. Disaster Peace is an incredible composer and you may know him from his creation of the soundtrack for Fez and the score for the 2014 thriller film It Follows. Disaster Peace has an incredibly unique way of crafting his music so that it transitions seamlessly. Hyper Light Drifter would not be the same without its luscious, wavy score as you travel into each area of the game. Each of those tracks continues swelling and growing when you travel deeper and deeper into unknown territories within the four regions of the game. 
the way each track intensifies to an extreme extent when you reach the guardian of a pillar is heart pumping and makes for an incredible experience. While the boss fights are already a huge highlight for the game, the music just makes it so much better. And the way it slowly transitions back into a calmer version of that same track that just had you sweating as you travel back to the central area of the game is unbelievably smooth and well done. Aside from the soundtrack, I have to admit that Hyper Light Drifter gets a lot of the audio feedback you're looking for from a game that's so focused on top-down combat, whether it's shooting enemies, hitting them with melee attacks, pulling out the different obelisks which you see all over the place, or the little pillars, the nodes. Everything you do in this game is satisfying, and I think that a lot of it has to do with the very intentional sound design and the way that plot points are conveyed through audio means. Because of the nature of Hyper Light Drifter, I think the sound subsection and the feel subsection kind of crosses over at this point because it really depends on whether you're playing with the controller or keyboard, but overall the sound design just meshes so well if you're playing with controller. Even if you're playing with keyboard and mouse, the rumbling from each of the obelisks, nodes, and pillars you pull up is so satisfying. The rumble from hitting objects and enemies to collect ammo feels and sounds so good. Actions as simple as dashing or picking up collectibles as you wander the tech-littered naturescape that is Hyper Light Drifter sounds so satisfying. While the combat and movement may not be incredibly in-depth, it feels so natural due to the audio and tactile feedback. While it may be important to highlight the moments when the tactile feedback empowers the player, I think it is also important to recognize when Hyper Light Drifter uses tactile feedback to make the player feel just as powerless and overwhelmed as the Drifter himself in situations. I think this creates a tangible connection to the character's experiences by design, and it is brilliant. Whether it's his heart rate pulsing when you're low on health, the controller shaking whenever particular guardians of pillars start attacking you, or even when judgment manifests during the Drifter's most vulnerable moments. While it may not force empathy from the player's perspective, there's at least an understanding of the Drifter's dire situation. Calling back to what makes Hyper Light Drifter so unique is our third subcategory, which is sights, in the last portion of this video. Not only is Hyper Light Drifter flat out gorgeous with its pixel art like many great games are, but it's very obvious from the start of the game that it is heavily reliant on visual aids and there is no dialogue. The fact that everything I just summarized can be told by visual means is something that impacted my view on games as a medium for expression. Everyone you encounter in the game that does speak to you either does so in picture format or they just make weird grunting noises that cannot be understood by the drifter, therefore they cannot be understood by the player. Modules, monoliths, gear bits, and weapons are the main collectibles found in a casual playthrough, all of which are shown how to use to the player as they pick them up. Just a simple demo displayed whenever something new is found. There's very little that gets in the player's way of being totally immersed throughout their journey in Hyper Light Drifter's futurescape. And that just about wraps it up. You may ask yourself, why are you talking about a game that is more than five years old at this point? Well. When there are tangible elements to a game using sound, touch, and visuals to emphasize or literally tell an entire story, once again I believe it's a topic worth bringing up seeing as there are things most people can experience in real time, and it usually isn't the focal point of why a game might be good or bad necessarily. Gameplay is important and it can be utilized in powerful narrative ways. I want to thank you for sitting through the entirety of this video. May or may not be able to tell, but this video specifically has been in the works for me for many years now. It is a little sporadic and my voice fluctuates quite a bit, but this is because I had recorded the main bits for the audio both times I contracted COVID. I'm very much new to video editing software and the video essay format as a whole, but the topic of games telling a story through sensory means is very near and dear to my heart. I have many notes over my lifetime that go over more specific examples. I feel like I'm finally ready to put it into something that I can create and publish somewhere. I've not had a chance to play through Heart Machine's second title as of yet, that being Solar Ash, though I'm very much looking forward to it. I already have the next narrative video lined up, but I'm unsure as of yet how often I'll be posting in this format. 
But to wrap this up, I want to thank my friends and family for pushing me to keep this project going forward. Please feel free to share any experience you may have had with the game telling a story through gameplay in the comments. I stream as frequently as I can, and there will be a link to that below. Anytime I post a scenario video, I'll be tweeting that out as well, so put my Twitter in the description too in case you're interested. But otherwise, thank you so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next scenario video. Also, shoutouts Kanye West.